All right, so let's look at the formal statement of the weak law of large numbers. Um, to begin, we imagine that we have a sequence of random variables, x1, x2, x3, etc. Each of these random variables is independent and identical. Um, so we think of these as a set of uh, independent measurements of the same thing. Let's suppose that the expected value of these is all given by the same number mu. Um, then, um, for any um, positive real number epsilon you pick, you can ask, what's the probability that if I measure uh, the first n of these random variables and take their average, um, that this is um, um, that this is different, you know, that this differs from the mean by more than epsilon. So we expect that this average value gets closer and closer to mu, and we're saying, well, if I pick some epsilon, what's the probability that this thing is actually bigger than epsilon? And what, this, uh, what the weak law of large numbers says is that, well, as the number of observations goes to infinity, and I look at this quantity, the probability that it will be different than the average goes to zero. Okay? So that's the weak law of large numbers. The mean. All right. So how do you prove something like that? Um, the basic tool in proving this is we need some way of estimating how close to the mean value a random variable is um, based on some property of that random variable. And in particular for us, we're going to use the variance. So if somebody gives you a mean and a variance, we would like to know how close that random variable is guaranteed to be or with some probability should be to its mean. The tool for doing this is what's called Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, so let's take a look at Chebyshev's inequality. Um, in brief, what it says is that if you have some random variable x with, um, with a mean of mu, you can ask what's the probability that x minus the mean, uh, or x differs from the mean, by more than some value k? And the answer is, well, it depends on the uh, variance. The probability is bounded by the, uh, the variance divided by k squared. So, like, for example, it's just... Um, make this a little bit concrete, like let's suppose that the variance is equal to 1, um, then you could say what's the probability that x is um, more than uh, you know, 3 units away from, from the mean. Well, if the variance is 1, then that probability is no more than um, 1 over 9, 3 squared. So the interesting thing about this is that we don't use very much information about the random variable to make this bound. We, all we need to know is the mean and the variance. There's certainly a lot of random variables that have the same mean and variance. Um, so this is really a relatively uh, limited amount of information. But knowing just this, we're able to at least bound how far a random variable can be from its mean in terms of probability. So next, um, let's take a look at how we can use this to prove the weak law of large numbers, and then we'll say a little bit about how to get Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, so um, how do we get from Chebyshev's inequality, which gives us a bound on the probability that x differs from its mean by some number, um, how do we get from there to the weak law of large numbers? Okay, well, let's just, um, why well, say, let me just go ahead and do it. So, um, the first observation is that um, the, um, is that if you start with a random variable, um, with these random variables, um, which are all identical, and you add them up, well, what happens to the mean and what happens to the variance? So, the expected value of a sum of random variables is the sum of the expectations. 
And um, for us, this is n times the mean. The expected value, um, excuse me, the variance of a um, sum of random variables, if they're independent, is the sum of the variances. And we're assuming that um, these are, let's say, all the same with variance sigma squared. And I should say here something that is uh, really being swept under the rug, I suppose, and that is that I'm making an assumption here that the random variables in question actually have well-defined uh, variances. So let's just assume that. Um, and not really say much more about it, but we're assuming it. Okay, so the variance of a sum is this. And so, um, so in particular, now, um, oh, and the, the other thing is what happens if you scale a random variable, right? So if I have a random variable, around, if you have a random variable x and you multiply it by lambda, and you say, how does the variance change? Well, it multiplies by the square of that scalar. Okay? So, in particular, if we look at this expression here, and call this uh, the new random variable x, then what do we know about x? The, um, the expected value of x is... Um, well, it's the sum of the expected values, which is that, and then, oh, I should tell you how the expected value scales, right? So expected value of the multiple, the multiple pulls out of the expected value, unlike the variance, but it just pulls out of the expected value. So the expected value of this variable is mu again. It's really n mu divided by n. And what about the variance? Well, the variance would be the sum of these variances, but which would then be um, n times the variance. Um, but then I'm rescaling it by uh, dividing by n, but that actually divides out by n squared when you pull it out of the, uh, of the variance, as in this formula, and so you got sigma squared over n. Okay. So, uh, let's then put that information into Chebyshev and see what it tells us. So if I were to look at this expression here, this is the probability that the variable x minus mu is bigger than or equal to epsilon. Um, now x, in our case, is a random variable whose mean is mu. Um, and so we can use this formula. And, that, and it says that this is less than or equal to the variance of my random variable x, which is sigma squared over n, divided by um, this thing squared. Okay? And now, if I were to take a limit of these things, Well, this is um, bounded by this, and as n goes to infinity, that gives me a zero. So, in the limit, I get zero. Okay? So, um, that's how Chebyshev's inequality gives us the weak law of large numbers. What remains to see is where Chebyshev's inequality comes from. And um, the answer is um, Markov's inequality. So the first time I saw it, when I, you know, before you really think about it too much, it's Markov's inequality is kind of surprising. What does it say? Um, Markov's inequality says that if you only know the expected value of a random variable, and if the random variable only takes non-negative values, so no negative values there, then you can estimate the, um, the probability that x is bigger than any given value, and it's always going to be the expected value divided by the value in question. What's, what's kind of funny about this at first blush is that you're talking about, um, 
the um, you're talking about the probability of the variable being um, you know beyond some bound, knowing only the um, knowing only the mean value and not actually knowing anything um, about its variance. But of course, this is a little bit of a red herring. It's the fact that everything is non-negative and things kind of can cancel out on the other side. So um, so let's. The, the proofs of these facts are, are pretty, straight, pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and do them. Um, and uh, I think it's a little illuminating, I guess. So, but let's just say, for, for example, just to get a feeling for Markov's inequality, like suppose you have some random variable x and the mean is um, 7, selection so value is 7. And then I could say, well, what's the probability that x is um, at least 100. Um, if the mean is 7, then the probability of x being at least 100 can't be too big, or else that would, you know, kind of weigh the expectation to, to, to much bigger than 7. And in fact, it's, what this says, it's no more than um, 7 over 100. Okay? So there's a reasonably low probability that you're that high. Okay, let's, let's just quickly see why this is true. So um, the idea is we could consider the event E being the event that X is, uh, let's say, bigger than or equal to A. Okay? And let's consider the indicator variable for E. So in other words, um, this, is, um, this is a random variable that has the value 1 if you're in E, and 0 if not. Okay? So um, the standard fact about the indicator variable is the expected value of that indicator is the probability um, that the event E happens. Uh, sorry about this notational flash. Let's call these the event F. So that it doesn't bump into the expectation letter. Okay. So, um, okay. So then, um, now note that the indicator is no more than um, x divided by a, right? If x is at least a, then this thing is at least 1. If x is at least a, this is at least 1, and this is 1. If x is less than a, then this is 0. And x is a positive thing, so this is still right. I should say here, a is some, um, you know, should be some non-negative number, or else, you know, we're, uh, well, I should make it be non-zero, or else we can't divide. Okay. So, because this indicator is less than this, we have the same relationship on the expectations. So, the expected value for i is less than or equal to the expected value of x over a. The expected value for i is the probability of f. It's the thing that we were interested in. This is the probability that you're in situation F. And, um, well, now the expected value scales when you, when you have a scalar there. So this is um, the expected value of X divided by A. And we have the inequality as we are looking for. Uh, so next up, I will explain why Markov's inequality gives you Chebyshev's inequality, which is always also a straightforward computation. All right, so all we have left to do is to explain why Chebyshev's inequality is true using Markov's inequality, and it's, uh, it's very straightforward. So we can just compute the probability that x differs by mu for, with some value um, k. Um, well, oh, excuse me, want to, uh, yeah, want to uh, prove this statement. So the probability that that's true, well, this is actually the same as um, because um, I should have also said over here, k should be 
or positive or else none of this stuff really makes sense, right? But uh, this probability is going to be the same as the probability that if you take this thing and you square it, which are two positive numbers, that's bigger than k squared. This is bigger than that if the square is bigger than the other one. All right. Um, and so then now we have, um, we have these two positive, this is a positive random variable or non-negative random variable. And here's, this is going to play the role of the A there. And we can use Markov's inequality and say that this is uh, less than or equal to the expected value of x minus the mean squared divided by k squared. Well, we have a name for this thing. The expected value of the square of the difference from the mean is what we call the variance. So this is the variance, um, which we write as sigma squared divided by k squared, and, um, and we are done. So Markov's inequality, which we just proved, proves Chebyshev's inequality that this is, and then Chebyshev gives us the weak law of large numbers.